So today I'm going to talk about Luminar AI and Perfectly Clear. Both of them have uh, artificial intelligence in them, which basically means that they will find the subject, they'll find the eyes, they'll find the face. So it, it cuts down on what you need to do. Now, both of those tools can be used uh, as standalones. I don't work that way. So let's start off with my normal workflow. I'll go into Lightroom. I will open up a picture. This picture is from the 2013 American Photo uh, Magazine shoot. Uh, the nice part about that was it was a $100 fee. You had some vendors there. It's like going to a conference for photographers, but you had models there that you could shoot. So normally I would go into the develop module and I would make changes to my exposure, my contrast. I'm not going to do any of that in this case. I'm just going to go down here to the lens corrections. And make sure that I've got the proper one set. 24 to 70, 2.8. That'll take out any distortion. Then from here, I usually go directly into Photoshop. The reason I do this is the first thing I do is create a new layer. So I can turn on and off the effect that I put on it. I can also dial it down if I want to. So we'll go in to filter. Skylum Software, Luminar AI. We'll wait for that to launch. I have two screens. Sometimes they will stick to the screen that I normally use. Uh, sometimes they pop up on the second screen. <clears throat> so it's taking a look at the picture and it's giving me options. I have an influencer, monochrome, blockbuster. Let's go with influencer. And we're going to try eventide. <laughs> you can see the changes that it made right off. If you go up here to the eyeball, you can hold down on that and see what it looked like before and after. Before and after. So we're going to go to edit. Everything that it changed has a dot next to it. We're going to start at the bottom. Work our way up. It has a super contrast to it, which you can turn on and off to see what it actually did. You can change the shadow balance. So you can change the look of the picture just by changing what it considers to be the shadows. Let's do a little of that. Now we'll go up to skin. You can have it remove defects for you. You can have it remove shine. You can change the amount of work that it did. Let's turn it off and see what it did. And it's so minor, it doesn't look like it really did anything at all to her. One thing you have to watch out for is sometimes they will make some extra changes like slimming people down. I understand there's some photographers that do that all the time. Uh, depends on what look you're going for. Here we have face specific stuff. So we could make her lips a little more red. You can whiten the teeth, you can darken the lips. It's going a little bit further to go look at the eyes. Now this can be very interesting. So if I turn it off, I don't really see any change to her eyes much. Now, one thing to keep an eye on is this Luminar AI up here in the top when it does something. So like when I turn it off, you'll see it flash. It's working while that's flashing. So we could turn this iris flare way up. And that's the little light underneath the eye that it's pulling. It 
Double clicking puts everything back to zero. Pull that up a little bit. You can whiten the eyes. You can enhance them a little. Now it doesn't get rid of the veins. If you want to get those out, you still have to go back to Photoshop. You can remove dark circles. Now these are things that either weren't in the template or the AI didn't think needed to be done. And she has no dark circles. We could improve the eyebrows. Oh, well, she doesn't really need that either. It has a film grain to it. So let's take that off. You can add glow, which is a soft focus. Oh, face also has a face light. And there's your slim face that I told you about. If you dial it up, it changes the look of the person, which not something I typically do. You could add a little more light to her face. Let's zoom out here a little bit so we can see that. So it, try, it brings the eye to the face a little more. It's one thing you can do with these. So once you go through and you make the changes that you want, and it's great to go through and play with the different sliders till you get something that looks good. Now, if you're doing something like this, where it was all at a photo shoot, and you want to look that across all of them, Bring that vibrance up just a little. You can change the temperature or the light. There's a contrast. You saw the other contrast before. You can change your black and whites. You got the curves. So there's several things you can do in here. Now down the bottom, you can see it says even tide edited. So if I like this, I could say, okay, save. Now, if I go back over to templates, go out of this, your templates get saved here. Unfortunately, you have to go back in here and rename them. You can't name it when you save it. Um, so we'll name it real quick. Now, anytime I pull a picture into here, I can immediately go to that template and get this look. Because it uses the AI, it'll find the eyes and it'll do the eye enhancement directly for you, apply it. It'll take a moment or two to export it. And this will be a layer back over in Photoshop. So now I've got my layer in Photoshop. I could go in here and I could play with the walls if I wanted to and things. I'm just gonna leave it as is right now and just do a save. But I'm gonna save it as a Photoshop file as opposed to the default TIFF that it wants to do. And that means I can always go back into it later and play with it. Let's see if it saved it to Lightroom. It did not. Okay. Oh, there she is. Good. We'll do that to compare them later on. But that's the AI. Um, piece. Let's do an AB. So that's what we started out with. And this is where Luminar AI got us. Next, we'll take a look at Perfectly Clear. And here we are with Jory again. We should still have the lens correction that I put on it before, but I just want to make sure. And I made no other changes at all to the image. So we're going to start off again in Photoshop, because that is my workflow. Drop it into Photoshop and go from there. New layer. And this time we're going to use filter. Athen Tech Software. 
perfectly clear version three. Now, a note about the two different types of software. Perfectly clear is a um, buy once software. It costs you about $129 as I make this. Uh, Luminar AI is a subscription base. Now, you'll notice one thing this does differently is it allows you to do a split screen on an image. Now, this is an auto that it's got. There's another one here. I have some favorites that I use, so let's take a look at this one. Again, you can go through and make your own up. So we're going to go through the settings that it does on the side and what they can do for you. So neutral density, you can see that it changes the color just a little bit. It takes it down just a touch. You can uh, do an image adjustment, which is basically the lighting. This one, you have to click on it, double click it to uh, make it clear. You change the faux exposure. It has face aware exposure. You can change the depth. You can change the contrast here. There is a skin and depth bias. Now, each one of these you can turn off individually so you can see what you're getting from it. Let's zoom this up. So we can pay attention to her face. So skin and depth bias, what they can do is they can add a little bit more um, depth to the face. And make your image pop just a little bit more. Get your histogram up the top if you need to look at it. You can pull a histogram up in Luminar AI as well, by the way. Here are the color ones. You can turn an entire panel off, or you can turn on and off individual pieces to see what they're doing for you. We can go to Vivid for the color. Let's back this out so we can see the overall, or more of the picture at this point. So we saw tone, we saw color, Usually, it does a pretty good job of finding the face. In this case, it did not. So we'll zoom into the face. It's easy to do. Just hit manually add face. Go just above the eye and click. And it frames the face. And you can say, apply. And take those controls out of the way. Now, you'll notice that suddenly her eyes changed. It was now able to find her eyes. And this takes a moment for it to cycle, so you don't get the little flashing thing. But you can see what it did. We're not enlarging the eyes. There are no dark circles to take out. You can put catch lights in, which is great if you're doing a shot with natural light and it doesn't have uh, catch lights in the eyes. You can just pop them in here to add them. And there are different types of catch lights that you can use. You just do an outdoor one. You do a ring light. Now we get into the face. Now lenses will distort faces a little bit, but not usually as much as some of the software thinks it wants to do. So let's take off the face. And in this case, you don't really notice much of a change because the template that I started from has a very low face contouring to it. You can sharpen the lips. You do a fine sharpen, you can do a medium sharpen, you can do a coarse sharpen. So we have our face, we have our eyes done. 
Now for the fun part. Perfectly Clear has some skin smoothing pieces that it does. You can also do blemish removal, which she doesn't have much of. There's a couple little dots, but nothing to really worry about. Infrared removal is sometimes a camera will pick up the infrared spectrum more than our eye does, so that takes that out. You can smooth the face only or the entire body. And you've got a subtle smoothing, a default smoothing, and a super smooth that you can do. And you can adjust that up at the top. Again, the entire effect can, has a strength at the top. I usually do it in Photoshop. Now we're going to put it back to a subtle. Now, what if you need to touch up the makeup a little bit? You can do that too. You can change the skin tone. You can add a little blush if you want by picking from a palette. Or by changing the colors directly down here. You see that I add just a little bit of blush to her cheeks. Skin toning is good if you're doing um, a boudoir shot or a shot like this where there's a lot of exposed skin. If it comes up uneven, either due to the uh, lighting or it just happens to be that uh, the skin that day is a little uneven. And you can tone the entire body uh, using this as well with a different foundation depending on what you're looking for. They have specific looks that you can add to it if you want to. This is a black and white film stock in a burnt uh, black and white type. And there's some other finishing that you can do down here like vibrance, the blacks, saturation, etc. Dial that up just a touch. I think I'm going to dial down the color, the exposure just a little so that it pops her a little bit more. You can click on it to get the entire before and after, or you can use the slider to see what you've got. <laughs> Once you've got one that you like, You can then save that, and then you can add it into your favorites up at the top. So it's just a question of getting everything set up for the shoot and for that particular person in the shoot. And then you're ready to save. Applying it will save the image itself back. Let's see, where is my... Oh, presets. Add a group, add or edit a preset. So there's my preset. I can save it. I can add an icon to it. I could put a description in here for it, and I'm good to go. It's a little harder to find than it is with the other one. But again, my favorites are in here. They're also up here. So you've got two places you can go get them. I'm happy with what I've got. I'm going to click apply. It'll kick up a progress bar, which in this case kicked up on the other screen so you didn't see it. And there's my finished image. File, save as. <laughs> Going to do a Photoshop. 
I'm going to go perfectly clear on the front of this. And we're going to save it. Okay. Now, before we go on to the comparison of the two images, I want to show you a little trick here with uh, Perfectly Clear. So if I right click and I go to export, I have a lot of exports. But you can see down here, there's the Perfectly Clear ones. And you set it up so that it can be done. Uh, you can export to Luminar 4, but you see how it's just open source files and edit a copy. If I export here, it will actually run it through the different things that are there, and then I can get a TIFF or a JPEG, depending on which way I've got it set up. So let's just do the um, full list of exports, because that'll be easier to look at. Because <laughs> I do have a lot of exports. Um, one thing I like to do every uh, couple of years is I go and send things into the copyright office. Um, that is a separate process. It cost you 20 bucks I, last time I did it to um, send things into the Library of Congress and make sure they're copyrighted. That helps protect you uh, should something come up about your picture that you've got it actually registered with your copyright. Now you can see perfectly clear complete. It has all these different presets. Let's pull one up. You can tell it what folder you want it to go to, what type of preset it is. So I could go into my user presets. And there's my list of all of my presets that I've got. And that's a lot of presets. But once you've got a couple that you want, tag them so they're easy for you to find in here. And then you can tell it where to go and how to name it and what you want the file format to be, all of that good stuff, just like a regular uh, export. So you could take an entire shoot once you've got your setup done in perfectly clear, you can then say, okay, this is how I want this person to look. These are the way I want her eyes to look, what I want to do for the lips, etc. And it might be different by outfit, however you want to set it up. And then you can just export all of those pictures through it. It gives you a starting uh, place to go. They make TIFFs out of everything and you can go from there. So let's pull up our two images side by side. You'll notice that the perfectly clear is a little bit more on the warm side. And again, I probably could have made these both match based off of the sliders in the templates. I like the eye piece out of what I get out of Luminar AI with the little uh, eye flare. But they're still working on their stuff, so this might get a little better as it goes. I kind of prefer the um, overall slider settings out of Perfectly Clear, but this is just my choice. And again, for $129, I could get just about everything that I want out of Perfectly Clear, and I could do the eyes on my own if I wanted to put a little lens flare in. Again, another thing to keep in mind Go back here to our pictures that we didn't do. Is out of all of this, we left out what you could get from Photoshop itself. I don't know if you guys have seen them or not, but under filter, there's these adaptive. Oh, the neural filters. And this is something that Photoshop is now doing. And you'll notice that immediately it found her face, asks me if I want to smooth the skin. Remove JPEG artifacts. Sc style transfer is kind of awesome. Um, a lot of these you have to download if you don't already have them. So we'll kick the style one off.
So if you wanted to do something a little different, something that looked more like a painting, you can select from different types of styles of painting. And Photoshop will apply it. Watch your little spinner up here. Don't get ahead of it. A lot of the stuff is new. A lot of it goes out to the uh, internet. So these are things that you have to do while you're connected. Uh, Luminar AI supposedly does not require the internet. Uh, I do not believe Perfectly Clear does as well. They're self-contained programs. Picking a style will take a moment or two, but then look what we got. We started with that and we now have this. So if you wanted to offer a digital art part of your portfolio, this would be another way to do it. To go in here and do this and then you could touch it up later. Again, we're looking for things that will cut down our time, allow us to take out the majority of what we do on a touch up so we can just go get back to shooting pictures and getting them out quickly to our clients. And there's an entire set of um, betas in here, other things that are still being built that you can say, hey, I would like this because, like face cleanup, photo to sketch. So it allows you to do some things in here. They even have one uh, section here that actually allows you to change the age of the subject. You can change the gaze, the hair thickness, head direction. So there's a lot of things in here you can do as well. Again, these aren't presets though. So this would be a, a kind of an after the, the majority of the work is done. So you could go in here and touch them up. Overall, going by the, what I can get out of these two, I can get everything that I want out of Perfectly Clear. And for me, I can just do exports, kick the things off as a bunch of TIFFs, and then I can go edit them. Or I can do as I did here and just throw it all into Photoshop, pop into Perfectly Clear quickly. The um, last preset that you use usually pops back up for you. But if not, you can just grab it from your favorites, tag them all as you go through, crank it through and get your pictures done quickly and easily. And if we go back here to the library with everything there, you can see how we started out. And that's what we started out with. This is what happened out of Luminar AI, a little more dramatic effect to it. And this is what happened out of Perfectly Clear. You'll notice that the bricks because of the depth bias is a little bit less here. Well, dropped them all on top of each other. Stacking, unstack. Um, so the perfectly clear kind of pulled her out a little bit more and that's where that depth comes in. You can also do that in Luminar AI. It's a little bit uh, more clunky to do there, but it has a, piece called structure and you can reverse the structure but in order for it to work because it hits the entire image if you're going heavy on the structure in other words you want to pull more details it'll make sure that it's not doing the person which is great for pulling in the landscapes a little bit more or doing something with the like the bricks in the back here or your background if you want to blur the background, you can do that by going into uh, Luminar AI, going into structure, but then having to basically mask her and changing the structure from a positive to a negative, it'll blur the background. Another way to do that, of course, is to go into Photoshop, which now has a subject selector, which pretty good. As you can see, let's de-emphasize her, create a new layer, have it select her again, select the subject, 
down here, which is outside of the area, is a little create mask. Now we've got her, so we're going to select the mask, invert the mask because we don't want her, we want everything else. Click back on the picture, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Figure out how much you want, and as you can see the preview, you can immediately see what it would do to the background and how it would pull her out. Let's step that down a little bit. Okay, that just gave her a little bit more pop. Uh, put the background more as the background, so it pulls her more into the visual range. And again, this is something that you can apply as another layer. If you don't like it or you think it's too much, you turn it on and off. But that's why I use the layers with the uh, plugins. So I would go in and do the plugin for uh, Luminar AI or Perfectly Clear, and then I would probably come in here and do the um, blurring effect. But that's Luminar AI and Perfectly Clear. Uh, I'll put the uh, links in the notes for this video, and I hope you found this helpful.